Technivers channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivers. Hey folks, Technivers here. Today we have a special look at something sent over to me by one of the developers of Kira. And I thank you very much for that. Let's take a look at Kira's new Arachne engine. Now this engine is in alpha, but it is usable. There are some known issues which are displayed here on the page where you can download the software. I'll give you that link at some point in this video. You're just going to have to watch it to find out when. But for now, let's take a look at some of the amazing differences that I've already seen in the way that they're building this software. So basically what they're trying to do is, it says right here, the goal is to have variable line widths instead of static for each extrusion and a better path planning in order to better fit the eventual printed part to specifications. Now, well, what does that mean? Well, I have Kira 4.8 loaded up as well as the new Kira Arachne engine. Let's double check over here. I'm gonna go to help and about and you can see we are in fact using the Arachne engine. So um, one of the big things that this does is tries to use variable deposit widths for your line width in order to fill small gaps in angular models and things like that. So a couple of things I want to direct your attention to, big differences in the slicing methods between these two softwares. Um, this is basically Kira, it's just running on a different engine and this engine over here which is the Arachne engine is meant to do better pathing. And you can tell that it does that because the time, even though the settings are the same, are, I mean, it's it's a 10 minute difference, a nine minute difference, uh, but this is a very small model. This is nine layers high. So um, that is going to be a big difference over a lot of time. There is a raft involved. That's why it's taking so long. Um, but let's see here. We are using 14 grams in both instances, but the Arachne version is using 4.68 millimeters, or excuse me, meters of filament compared to 4.72 meters of filament. So you're also saving filament. That tells you that the pathing is a little bit better. Now the interesting thing about that, uh, and this functioning faster and using less filament, is it's obviously doing its job. Let's take a look at, this is a Velociraptor card I quickly downloaded from Thingiverse because it has all of these angles in here which are good illustrations of exactly what this new engine is doing so let's take a look at this finger here and you can see that there's a gap in the middle there and the finger down below has some gapping in the finger as well as the talon let's go take a look over on the other side and you can see that that gap is filled in with the arachne engine and that's because they're trying to use variable widths here in order to fill those tiny gaps instead of picking up and moving to the next spot they'll try and just fill that spot. This is broken up and this is a continuous line which means your printer is not stopping extruding it's just extruding slightly more filament in the areas where it wants the line to be wider which is a good thing that's going to reduce travel time and retractions and things like that. So if we look down here in this finger you can see that it is a little bit better filled in. Now it's not perfect there are still a few gaps but if you look over here on the 4.8 engine the gaps are a lot more pronounced and a lot more there basically throughout the model here this is also a continuous line so that's saving us some travel time one of the other things i wanted to illustrate is that this tiny little gap here that it's trying to fill with micro lines um, you're going to have an easier time extruding at a wider width which is why you're going to go faster and have a less blobbing mess just pushing down a little extra filament like you do here to fill that gap and doing it in one contiguous line and you can see that this is all wall down here, which means it's all going to be outer surface, which means you're going to have a nicer finish. This here is a little bit of infill in there. Uh, I guess technically that's top surface, but um, it's not actual wall surface, I guess. So um, let's take a look at a couple other places on this model that you can see right here. This little three-pointed star-shaped figure has a lot of gapage in it. Over here, there is a lot of reduction in those gaps. So not only is it not trying to produce things smaller than it actually can, um, it's taking advantage of the fact that it can go wider and filling those gaps more ergonomically into the shape that it's trying to print. And you can see that all throughout this card here. As I zoom out, let's. it's going to take me a second to jump back over here. Let's go. Come on. 
you're slow. Zoom out. There we go. All right, it's zooming. It's zooming. Um, say the talon on the foot of the raptor here and here. You can see it's a little bit better filled in there. And the, I mean, this, this can lead to weak spots in your model, um, especially a small model like this. It's a card you're trying to clip into a, a build your own type model, and that's going to leave gaps and stuff, easy break points. This is going to be a lot more structurally sound. And it's nice to know that it goes in here um, and, and it takes care of the tiny details. A lot of the stuff, okay, so let's look at the head. I know I'm babbling. I'm just really, really excited about this. I just learned about this software today. I'm going to be doing some test prints, and you're going to be seeing a lot of it coming up. They would like you to, and I'll give you the website right now. Let's jump over and check it out. So the download website is basically right here, um, and this is github.com slash ultimaker slash kira slash releases slash tag slash arachne underscore engine underscore alpha so I will post this right there on the screen where you can see it a little bit better and we are going to jump back over to Kira because I wanted to show you look at the skull here um, there's a couple really tiny gaps but if you look at this one there's a lot more gappage so this is two lines wide here basically one two and the same here one two but it is basically continuing that path and, and filling those gaps with a little bit wider extrusion and you are getting a lot more fill. And the same down here where it's filling. And the other thing that is nice about this is there are other options. So say this is leaving a couple too many gaps, you don't like it, you can go up here and the new settings are found under shell and you're gonna be looking at variable line strategy. Now when I downloaded this and I turned it on, I did have to hit the settings wheel under shell and search variable line strategy. Um, you can just type variable and it'll pop up. And I had to check that and activate it because it was grayed out and I couldn't see it in my settings, even though that's the main reason of downloading the software. So just be aware, if you can't find it, you're going to want to go into the settings of shell because that's where it's at. Right now I have it set to inward distributed and this basically says that it's going to, uh, it, it, it's up here. Um, so inward distributed is a balance between the other two uh, and the other two are our central deviation It'll print all the walls at a nominal line width except the central ones causing big variations in the center But very consistent outsides Distributed distributes the width equally over all the walls. So let's check out distributed with this model We'll slice it again and take a look and see if that saves us any more time, see if it saves us any more filament, and see if we can get any of those gaps filled in. So we are down to 134 minutes, um, 14 grams. We're still using about 4.68 meters, so the same amount of filament. And you can see that this gap here in, in the rib cage is now gone. But we were more particularly looking at the head. This cheek spot here is actually a little worse um, as is this one so maybe not my favorite this is why I've been playing around the same with the, the, the rib bone up here so you're gonna want to experiment with what has the best let's try that on center just to kind of illustrate the difference a little bit more I like so far I liked the inward distributed the most because it seemed to do the most filling of gaps in the model Ooh, one hour, 35 minutes, so it added a minute, added a little bit of filament doing the inward fill. Um, and it didn't fill this gap. We have a strange, it tried to fill this, but didn't really fill it. So obviously the pathing isn't optimized for all of these yet, but I think that we're going to go back. We're going to do some prints using inward distributed because it looked really good. It filled most of those gaps, and I will show you that print versus the 4.8 print in just a moment and here we are on the left you have the kira 4.8 version on the right you have the kira arachne engine now there are uh, several differences between these two prints simply between which engine was used as you can see on the right the arachne engine has resulted in a far better quality print and doesn't have any of the gaps that you see in the 4.8 version over here as well as none of the over or under extruding it seems to be printing 
just about perfectly. Now I can say this part right here on the far left of your screen that you see basically right here uh, which correlates with this part right here that piece did print better on 4.8 but overall the rest of these pieces I mean significantly both pieces of the skull here uh, are better on the arachne engine and the rib pieces as well and I also didn't get this is much smoother down here if you see I get this artifact line around the walls the perimeter of both the legs and the main body using 4.8 and that was pretty much gone over here nice smooth top surface and I feel like now I did these on the raft so that I could get them off of the bed and compare them side by side without damaging them but I feel like this one's gonna come away from the raft itself a lot easier because it is a little bit thicker and a a lot better of a print being the same model same slicer the only real difference being that little engine there so the arachne engine in my opinion is well on its way towards being a winner and it's pretty amazing definitely give it a look these guys want you to check it out keep in mind it is still an alpha one of the reasons they contacted me is because I often ask you to check out the new beta and give them feedback and that is something that they want with this alpha very very badly so make sure that you check out the link below download the alpha play with it keep your old version so you don't lose anything make sure that you check out the page of known glitches now this is also on the main download page we'll jump over there right now and you can check it out so all of this stuff right here are things that they know need a little bit of work um, all, they've been affected by the change in engine and these settings don't exactly work exactly as they used to so there are a few things that they're working on and they want you to be aware of those but for the most part as you can see I'm getting far better prints using this engine and I highly recommend helping them test it out and giving them feedback they want your prints to fail because they want to know what went wrong and they want you to file an error report there's also a discussion page with some really really interesting things that are definitely worth checking out and some basic descriptions for the new settings and things like that so like I said the links down below download it don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we're gonna have a lot more arachne videos including printing a much longer and larger print and we're gonna check out what effect this new engine has on difference in print times for larger and more intricate models as well so stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one well that's it guys that's gonna wrap up this video if you've noticed the shirt the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel. But they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out. And know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link, check out our Patreon link, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.